This is. This is. This is. Hi guys, my name is Shakir, coach at the Ring Boxing Community, also a professional fight coach, the Golden Glove Asia promotion fighters such as Abdu and Hamza. Today I have here with me Jared, also a coach at the Ring Boxing Community, amateur fighter and national champion. We're gonna go through with you guys today a tutorial on how to get into good proper boxing stance, three guts that you can actually adopt. So if so that you can practice this even before you start to punch there are some things that you need to work on and these are the things that we're going to go through with you guys today in today's lesson let's go okay the first thing we're going to go through today is to get into a good proper boxing stance there are two stances that you can adopt depends if you're right-handed or you're left-handed if you're right-handed you're going to go into an orthodox stance if you're left-handed you're going to go through into a south core stance. Okay, but for today, because Jared is a right-hander, he's gonna adopt an orthodox stance. Orthodox stance, basically, what it means is your left side is gonna be forward, and your right side is gonna be towards the back. Okay. As for the distance of the legs, you always wanna keep it about shoulder width apart. You don't wanna make it too wide because then it will limit your movement and your mobility. You don't wanna make it too narrow then it, your balance will not be as good. Okay, so you want to be about shoulder width apart, slightly wider is fine. Okay, also you want to face it about 45 degrees. It depends. Some people like it a little bit more, some people like it a little bit less. Okay, but for us today, we're going to go about 45 degrees. You're going to face towards your right. Okay, after, after that, you're going to go to the knees now. Okay, you don't want to lock your knees when you're in your boxing stance. Okay, if you lock your knees, you find that you will have very difficult time to move okay for your movement it's gonna be very difficult you're gonna have softer knees that's it you're gonna have a bit of a bit of spring a bit of bounce in that okay the next thing we're gonna to go to now we're gonna focus on how your hips and your shoulders are gonna be facing okay your hips and your shoulders they are, they are gonna be following your legs if your legs is gonna be 45 degrees that's how the hips the shoulders should be you don't want to face forward because if you start to face forward Right, if you're going to face forward like this, you find that you're actually too square. You're opening up too much to your opponent. Remember, you always want to be compact, you always want to be neat, you always want to play it safe. So you're going to turn that around, right, same, same direction as your legs. However, your, your face is still going to push it forward, okay, you still going to face your opponent that way. Keep your chin down at all times, do not expose the chin. Okay, so there are two types. When you're in your boxing stance, there are two things or two types that you can adopt. Okay, you can have a little bit more bounce, a little bit more spring in your step, a bit relaxed. Okay, however, for this, this is good. Okay, you, you'll be fast, you, you find that you're a lot more relaxed. Okay, but to sustain this for 10 rounds is, is gonna be difficult. For 12 rounds, it's gonna be very near impossible. Okay, so for this is usually adopted by amateur fighters who go for like three rounds of three minutes. Okay, so this is why they can do this because they are fighting for about nine minutes in total. Okay, however, there's another one that you can do, okay, which is a little bit more grounded. So you're going to be a bit more grounded. Okay, you're going to tighten up the core, a bit more grounded. But same, you don't want to put, or you don't want to lock your knees. You still want to have good proper balance. You still want to distribute that weight evenly between the front side and the back leg. So that's it. So you're going to move forward and back. Yes, but you're always going to be grounded there. So now that you have gotten into your boxing stance, 
Okay, we're gonna go through some of the guards that you can use while you box. Okay, the first guard we're gonna go through today okay, is a high guard. How do we go to a high guard? Okay, first and foremost guys, in any guard that you do, you don't wanna flare out your elbows. That's it, you don't wanna flare, you wanna keep it again, everything nice, neat and compact. Okay, your, your hands should be as close to your body as possible. Right, so the high guard, okay, you actually wanna put as you can see, Coach Jared, what he does is he actually curls that his hands around his eyebrow. Okay, one of the advantages of having a high guard is that you will be able to see the straight punches coming in and you'll be easily able to parry the straight punches that come. If it's a jab, again, you use your right, if it's a cross, you can use your left to parry those punches. Right, so from a side view, this is how it should look like. That's it. Okay, so coming back to the front view, when you're in your high guard, some of the disadvantages, again, everything has an advantage and a disadvantage in boxing. So the sort of disadvantage that you have when you're in your high guard is that you will not be able to see the hooks coming in. You're basically limiting your vision slightly because now you are closing off the side view. That's it. Good. But also, you are actually going to limit yourself to protecting against the body, body shock. That's it. Okay, especially coming towards the middle because your guard is high. As a result, your elbow and your hips are quite far apart. And the second guard we're going to go through today is a slightly lower version of the first one. Okay, so it's, yeah, what you're going to do, again, keep your elbows in, nice and compact. You are going to put your hands or your fist right around your chin area. Okay, so one of the advantages that this guard has, that the other guard or the first guard that we went through doesn't, is the fact that now with this guard, you have a lot more mobility in your movement. That's it, you can duck, weave, roll under a lot faster, a lot more comfortably. Okay, one person or one boxer that made this guard very, very famous is of course Mike Tyson. Okay, so again, with every guard that you do, there are some disadvantages. One of the disadvantages of this guard is the fact that you are now open to punches to the head. Although your vision is a lot better, okay, how the pairing of the punches will be a bit more difficult because then you have to do a bit more movement with your hands to parry those straight punches coming in. Good? Okay, so another advantage for this guard that you will have is the fact that now when you lower that hand down, okay, your elbow comes closer to your hips, therefore Defending against those punches to the body becomes a lot easier, a lot less movement. You don't have to duck down too low, just a little bit of movement and you'll be able to catch those punches with your elbows. Good. So one of those, uh, one of the times that you can actually use this guard, right, is when you want to come in. So you want to close distance, right, your opponent is punching you, you can duck with easily with your head movement and close that distance, get into your in fight. Okay, the last the last guard that we're gonna go through today, okay, is known as keeping your hands down. There's actually not a specific name for it. Okay, so what you're gonna do again, just because you said that the, the guard is keeping your hands down doesn't mean you keep it all the way down. No, as you can see, what Coach Jared does is that his right hand is around his chest region. He is still keeping it close, nice and tight to his body. Right, so if any body shot comes from the left or from the right, that's it, he can, he can protect it fairly easily. One of the um, famous boxers that made this stunt really, really popular is actually Muhammad Ali. Right, you can check out some of his fights. He loves to do this kind of um, guard. Okay, usually the the guard that is done here will always be coupled with that that light footwork that we did or we went through when we went through the boxing start. So this is a very very good example of the two things that you can do or the two things that you connect together okay, to have a style to have your own boxing style. Right. So one of the advantages of having or adopting this guard and this boxing style or this boxing style is that you can see punches coming in yes you can react faster because you're a lot more light on your legs you're a lot more relaxed okay however if you do get caught with a shot if you do get caught with a big punch it can be quite devastating for you so we always advise people that when you get into this kind of boxing style 
you should know what you're doing. You shouldn't just adopt this boxing stance because it looks good. It doesn't work that way. Kickboxing is not about looking good, it's about being effective and efficient in your punches, in your defense, and in your boxing stance. So we have come to the end of today's tutorial. Hope you guys have learned something today. Hope you guys found it useful. Do join us for our 6 p.m. live workout, which will be conducted by Coach Hamza and Coach Abdul. It will be streamed on our Instagram and Facebook page. Thank you guys very much. Stay safe, stay positive, health is wealth in 2020.